Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I want you to imagine this scenario. Imagine that the San Francisco 49ers are trying to sign quarterback Trey Lance, and they hit a major snag in the contract negotiations. Yes, something like this is probably not going to happen due to the rookie wage scale and how smooth operations with rookies have usually gone in the past decade. But imagine that the Niners and Lance are struggling to come to terms. Because of this, Trey's dad, who is not an agent or a lawyer or anything along those lines, calls up the 49ers and negotiates his contract for him. Call it an extreme example of helicopter parenting. Call it a dad taking the initiative. Call it what you want. But imagine something like this happening. Because what's crazy about this scenario is that this actually happened once. In 1969, when the San Francisco 49ers were struggling to sign their tight end and their first round pick Ted Qualick, the man responsible for ending the holdout was, of all people, Ted Qualick's father. And this is the story behind the strangest contract negotiation in 49ers history. Before I talk about the actual negotiation, we need some context as to who Ted Qualick is, why the Niners wanted him, and why the negotiations hit a snag in the first place. In 1968, the starting tight end on the Niners was a man by the name of John David Crow. After spending his first seven seasons with the Chicago Cardinals and then the St. Louis Cardinals, he joined the Niners in 1965, playing running back and then tight end at the very end of his career. And all things considered, Crow was a really solid pass catcher during that 1968 campaign. He finished the season with 31 receptions, which was tied for the best total of his career. He finished with 531 yards, which was the best total of his career. And he scored five receiving touchdowns, which was the second highest total of his career. Crow was a great player. There's a reason he's a member of the All-1960s team, and his performance in 1968 was certainly no exception. However, Crow was going to be 34 years old by the time 1969 rolled around, and he didn't have much left in the tank. He knew that his time was up, and at the start of December, with two games to go, Crow announced that the 1968 season would be his last. His 11th season would be his final year in the NFL. This meant that the Niners had a hole at the position that they needed to fill. That hole would be filled in the 1969 NFL Draft. And the man to fill it was Penn State tight end Ted Qualick. In Qualick's three seasons with the Nittany Lions, he was a force to be reckoned with. He finished inside the top 10 amongst all independents in yards per catch in 1966 and 1967. During the 1968 season, he finished fourth in the Heisman voting. Especially when put into today's context, with Kyle Pitts being the first tight end in nearly 45 years to finish inside the top 10 in voting, to be fourth is extremely impressive. He was the leading player in every major statistical category for pass catchers on the team, and was a big reason why they went 11-0, becoming the first team in school history to win every single game. With Anita tight end, the Niners spent their seventh pick in the draft on the Penn State man. It was actually somewhat surprising that he fell that far, as both Pittsburgh and Philadelphia were supposedly very interested in him. While the Eagles might be regretting that decision to pass him up by taking Leroy Keyes, Considering the fact that the Steelers chose some random defensive tackle out of North Texas State by the name of Joe Green, I'm not sure Pittsburgh is losing any sleep over that pick. Regardless, Qualick was now a Niner. Now the team had to sign him. And that was proving to be extremely difficult. As we hit the beginning of training camp, and as we drew closer and closer to the start of the 1969 season, Ted Qualick was still not signed. There are two major things that we need to consider about Qualick not being under contract yet. The first is that before the rookie wage scale was a thing, top rookies negotiating their contracts was a giant game of chicken. Nobody wanted to be the first one to break. And especially in 1969, with Bills running back OJ Simpson projecting to make a boatload as the number one overall pick, and possibly make money unheard of for a rookie back then, with Simpson still not signed, no other big rookie wanted to sign a contract before him. This was true of Leroy Keyes, and this was true of Ted Qualley. In fact, those three players were in contact with each other during the offseason. Whether it was about the contract or something different entirely isn't clear, but it was clear that these players knew what was going on with each other, and nobody wanted to be the first one to break. Even though those three active players were the big ones that people were talking about since they were all Americans, they weren't the only ones. By the middle of July, you have three first-round picks from the AFL and seven first-round picks from the NFL still unsigned. This includes Ron Sellers of the Boston Patriots, who was taking one spot ahead of Qualic, and tried to do something absolutely hysterical and illegal while signing his contract that you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Nobody was biting. And it also didn't help that the Niners weren't particularly known as a kind team when it came to money. Qualic wanted a larger bonus than what the Niners were offering him, and the Niners declined. He wasn't the only pass catcher on the team having problems. 
Wide receiver Clifton McNeil had 71 receptions in 1968, which was the top total in all of football. He wanted a new contract with more money. And the Niners, who were somewhat skeptical since he had 12 career receptions in four years prior to that shockingly good 1968 season, weren't giving it to him. Two years before, Dave Parks, coming off of three straight Pro Bowl appearances and a 1965 season where he won the Triple Crown by leading the league in receptions, yards, and touchdowns, held out for a new deal that the Niners weren't giving to him. Whatever the case, San Francisco had a history of not giving out money to receivers, and Qualic seemed to be no exception. By the time August rolled around, Qualic was still unsigned, and with one month to go before the start of the regular season, there were no signs of progress anywhere. So who was the one that ended the stalemate? Who was the one that was able to get the ball moving in the right direction? As crazy as it might sound, the man who did it was Ted's father. Enter a man by the name of Thaddeus Qualic Sr. By every account, Thaddeus was an incredible dad. In every interview, Ted had nothing but good things to say about his father. How he was a great role model, was fantastic at teaching life lessons, worked two jobs to provide for the family, and encouraged his son to play football. And just like his son, Thaddeus was extremely frustrated that there hadn't been a deal yet. Thaddeus wanted his son to be out there playing football, and because of this contract holdup, he couldn't do it. In Thaddeus' words, he was tired of the pussyfooting around, and wanted to get down to brass tacks. In language that makes more sense by 2021 standards, he was tired of nobody making a move, and wanted a sense of urgency in the negotiations. He wanted to get this done. If neither side was going to make the first move, then by God, he was going to step in and make it himself. That's when Thaddeus called up the Niners himself and wanted to work out a deal. Not only did the Niners answer the phone and listen, but whatever Thaddeus said worked so well that they invited him and his family all the way out to San Francisco to talk it over at the club's expense. Talk about the most effective phone call ever. Once in San Francisco, the two sides were able to work out a deal. Ted was finally going to be signed. While details of the contract aren't entirely known, it was obviously a comparable deal to what other players around that draft pick were making. And Ted was excited that this hassle was finally done, as he was ready to go, saying, I'm not a part of the team, and I want to be. Now, because of this contract agreement finally being signed, he was. And fortunately for the Niners, he made their pick completely worth it. Because when Qualic was playing, he was one of the top tight ends in all of football. You could easily make the argument that in the first half of the 1970s, Qualic was maybe the best tight end in the game. Bob Windsor was the starting tight end for the first two years that Qualic was in San Francisco. So Qualic didn't get to see a whole lot of action, only catching 12 passes over those first two years. But by 1971, he was in the team's starting lineup and was ready to play a big role on the team, quickly becoming one of John Brody's favorite targets. In 1971, he had 52 receptions for 664 yards and five touchdowns. Not only did he finish fourth in the entire NFL in receptions and second in the NFC only behind Bob Tucker of the New York Giants, but he made the first Pro Bowl of his career. How would he follow that up in 1972? Well, he made another Pro Bowl and was named a first-team All-Pro for the first and only time in his career. Quali finished that season with 40 receptions for a career-high 751 yards and a career-high 9 touchdowns, finishing inside the top 10 in the entire NFL in receiving yards and third in receiving touchdowns, only behind teammate Gene Washington and New York Jets tight end Rich Caster. And in 1973, he finished inside the top 10 in receptions and receiving yards while making his third straight Pro Bowl. Qualic would last in the NFL until 1977, playing the final few years of his career across the bay with the Oakland Raiders. When you have a nine-year career, make three Pro Bowls, and are considered arguably the greatest tight end of the game at one point, that's not too shabby of a career at all. Qualic's father would unfortunately pass away in 1981 at the age of 60 from an extended illness. And while he was a great father by all accounts, from an NFL perspective, his legacy is a bizarre one that we might never see the likes of again. Nowadays, besides the fact that these holdouts really happen, you've got agents and trained representatives and lawyers working out these contracts. You don't have the father of a player doing that himself. But in 1969, that's exactly what happened. And it might have resulted in the strangest contract negotiation in the over 75-year history of the San Francisco 49ers. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Monday and Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jrgator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping on the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. 
so you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.